Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Another beautiful day today. I brought my Portula Caria Afroforest out from the plant room onto the bench and today I'm going to do a little bit of work on it. I'm also going to be working on some other trees so just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Here's a look at my Portula Caria Afroforest. So all the trees survived the winter uh, some were starting to lose their leaves. The uh, light levels were dropping in the plant room. So the trees weren't too happy in there. So I'm glad to get them outside here in the greenhouse, out into the sunshine where they'll uh, begin growing with a lot of vigor. If you notice in the background, I have a new book that I got at a garage sale today. I'll just show you a few pictures in it. I just got the book for the pictures. So if I open up the front, there's an acacia tree. Looks really, really nice. Nice silhouette with the sun setting in the background. What a beautiful image. It's just fantastic. And then, so this is, that's the name of the book. Uh, and then there was a really nice picture in here. There's one picture of a baobab. So that is, what a beautiful tree. Triple kind of uh, upper branch structure very spreading. It's a kind of a wide spreading tree. So this one kind of reminds me of my main tree in my forest. So my tree kind of has, doesn't go to a triple trunk, but it's sort of that kind of a style where you have a thick base and then it divides. There it is. It's a double page spread here. Uh, I hope you can see it okay. Let me see, maybe from up here. So Here's the baobabs in the landscape. And I really, really like the style of this one. I'm trying to get as close as I can without it going out of focus. But yeah, I think that is just, yeah, that's the style of a baobab that I like. That is fantastic. Now the other ones are quite nice too, like this one's beautiful tree also. And then over here, we have some other ones, shorter one. This one's kind of a different style canopy on it. A different canopy form. Well, you probably can't there. You can see it a little better there. It's the shadow of the camera in the picture, but at least you can see it. That book was only a dollar, and I found I got a dollar's worth of inspiration out of that book. And I have a nice photograph to show that style of the baobab that I really like. So I'll try and apply that to my trees and my actual baobabs. My baobabs are still down here in front of the heater and I turn the heater on at night because it's still getting quite cold at night here. So you can see on the biggest tree, uh, it's really starting to leaf out now and not only on the branch tips, but down the trunk too. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, you can see down here, the shoots coming out. So that's exciting. It shows it really likes this bigger pot, this deeper pot. And I'm watering and fertilizing it fairly regularly. So I'm keeping the soil mo moist. So I'm not letting it, you know, go too dry. Now, one thing I mean to do, I meant to do, is these are the new spring leaves on this baobab here. And I just love the taste of them. So I'm going to try a spring leaf. So here I go. Let me just clean my hand first. There we go, and into my mouth it goes. All right, here I go, my first baobab leaf of the season. Mmm, there's that creamy texture and taste. Yeah, that's really good. I would grow baobab trees just to harvest the leaves for salads, that's for sure. My main Portula carry Afro tree here. I mentioned that I didn't prune off this one trunk even though it's sticking up higher than the rest because it has a really nice branch here and I just I just couldn't bring myself to trunk chopping it once again even though I probably should have but so my strategy was to kind of grow this side of the tree larger and keep this side pruned so today I'm going to prune back this side of the tree and keep this one growing with vigor all right so here I go I have a shoot coming straight out front here. I don't want it shading out the branches down below, so I'm going to remove that one totally. So 
so that comes right off. So this upper part here, this branch I just pruned, it, it divides from one to two. There's an upright one. I'll prune this one back to the first leaves and also the back one. Internodes are quite long right now because it was growing under grow lights in the winter. And the grow lights weren't really strong either. I'll prune. Uh, just take the stub out of the center there. Tough to prune this one. Hasn't got a lot of vigor. We'll just have to leave that one. Uh, here's another one coming straight out front. I'm going to have to redirect it. So I have an upward shoot here. If you can see that on the inside, so I'll take the tip off like that, remove the lower leaf. So this is kind of my leader going upwards now. Now, there's, I got this branch here and one coming from here and they're interfering, interfering with each other. Um, I probably don't even want this entire trunk line here. I have this one. Um, because this one is kind of growing back in towards the center of the tree. Yeah, I'm going to take this one right out. So this will be a fairly big cut because I'm going to take out that center stub too. Uh, maybe I'll do it in sections. So here I go, taking that whole tip off. And then I've got to clean that stub up. So I'll get my pruners. I will come in like this. Just taking it back like that. I think that looks better. I'm looking at this back branch here. This one's kind of lost some of its earlier leaves, but I will still prune it back. And this one I can prune back to here. Long internodes, too long. And here. That's as compact as I can get that branch which is not very compact. Hoping, I'm hoping that something else kind of, uh, I get some new growth and then I can just take those right off eventually. Um, here's another branch that's kind of growing towards the center of the tree. I'm going to take that right out. Yeah. Just clogging up the center of the tree there with crossing growth. Okay, now this center trunk here has a piece out the back here, a branch. I'll prune that back as compact as I can get it, which again isn't that compact, but it's as much as I can do. So my scarring seems to be working quite well on the trunk. It, it gets rid of the rings and it creates an interesting texture when it heals. You can see down lower this white part is kind of healed. And it's kind of, yeah, creating a really nice, more of a baobab look to the trunk. I'm just peeling off some loose bark here. Okay, let's see if there's any other pruning I can do. Here's another piece or branch that's crossing over. I'm going to get rid of that. Prune my stub back and prune this. Actually, I want to grow this. I won't prune that compact. Uh, almost did there. Um, this one's crossing, I'll take it out. I don't want to develop branches growing in a bad area. This one's crossing. Um, will I take that out? Yes, I will. I'll put it back for now. Take my stuff back. There's one growing on the inside here. I've got to remove that one.
Okay, I, I think that's um, got a lot of the structure sorted out. Uh, there's still more work to come. Oh, there's a little one down here. I don't need that. I'll take that out. There. Okay, I, I'm happy. I think the main tree is on the right track. I'm, I'm just looking at my scarring here. I'm just going to introduce a few new scars here. that just to break up you know any regular kind of sections to make it look a little more a little more natural I guess I've still never tried this trunk scarring on a jade yet and I should do that so maybe we'll do that today because you'll never see the results of it if you never do it so I better do it today so in the future we can come back and look at our jade and say okay that worked or that didn't work so well. I, I would imagine a jade is very similar to the Portulacaria afra as far as healing of the trunk and scarring it and that but again I don't know until I've tried it. I do want a similar look to my jades, to kind of a rough baobab looking tree or a, a textured trunk that looks more like a baobab rather than segmented like a jade or a portulacaria afra. Now this branch I want branch or this this trunk line or branch I, I want more branches and I've tried scarring it in the past and gotten nothing but I'm going to keep doing that reintroducing wounds here cutting that sap flow and hopefully stimulating a branch to grow because if I can get something to grow out front or out the side here it'll allow me to shorten that. Yeah so I'm like scarring it up here hoping I get something something happening it would be really nice I would be most pleased if it did. Okay all right well yeah, I hope it just enjoys the sunshine out here and everything starts gaining vigor and growing and recovering. Yeah, exciting to get it back outside. I'm uh, looking forward. Now, I find when they go outside, these any succulent into the sunshine, they just start taking off in vigor. The health goes up, everything. They just do really, really well. So... And it happens very quickly. Within a couple of weeks, you'll notice big changes on this. It'll really, really fill in. This tree is very small. And my goal is to get all the features of a large tree in a small tree. And that's the purpose of any bonsai, is to try and miniaturize down all the features of a large tree into a smaller tree. And I think this tree is getting there. It's looking wide at the base. It's got the scarring on the trunk now which is making it look more older and mature looking yeah so I still have a lot of work to do in the upper structure and the canopy but I think the tree is getting there you know for the size of it it's looking good I'm uh, happy with the miniaturization I told this story before uh, one of the first bonsai shows I went to uh, they had the main room of the show with all the larger trees and uh, and then they had a room that yeah, kind of showcased the smaller trees, you know, the Shohan and Mami. And I remember seeing one tree in that show, just one tree, and the miniaturization on it was phenomenal. Um, the structure, the roots, the trunk texture, the bark, the leaves, the branch structure. It was almost unbelievable, and it really, really opened my eyes up to um, that bonsai uh, isn't so much about the size, but the quality. And this tree had exceptional quality. I wish I had a picture of it, but I don't. And it's always stuck with me in my mind. Uh, and I remember going into the main room, seeing the larger trees, and I thought, that little tree, whoever owned it or worked on it 
had better techniques than a lot of the larger trees. The larger trees didn't have that that quality. And so yeah, that was my favorite tree of the show, a tree about this tall. And it to me it really it sh it it stood out amongst all the trees in the show. It, it was just outstanding. And yeah, that's always stuck with me that you know, it's not the size of the tree, it's the quality of the tree. Getting all those features, the root spread, the trunk, the taper, the bark, the branch structure, all those features in a small tree, and that's what makes an exceptional bonsai. It's not whether it's this big, this big, or even a giant one. Certainly the large trees are more impressive at the show, especially if you're viewing them from the distance. You, I mean, they're just impressive because of the mass of them and the amount of details you can put in a large tree versus a small one. But it doesn't always mean those details are are good details. Sometimes it's just more of the same. Uh, you know, instead of five or six really carefully uh, grown branches and uh, shaped branches, maybe it's uh, 25 mediocre branches. So. Yeah, so that's my feeling. I, I um, whenever I look at a bonsai, you know, I'm not looking at the size of the tree. I'm looking at the quality of it, and to see really exceptional quality trees is rare. I find uh, there are lots out there, but uh, it's nice when you go to a show and you see, ah, oh, that one's just exceptional. Like someone's really put the time and effort in the tree and really grown it well, and it, it's. It's refreshing to see. Now, I'm not saying that the other trees are beautiful and good to look at either. It may, it may be a time factor, you know, that um, they're earlier on in their bonsai life and the, the more impressive, well-ramified and well-grown trees are older. Uh, or it could be the skill of the person. I mean, your skills in bonsai develop with age, so when you start out you know almost nothing and you don't know what a tree should look like or anything like that and then as you are in the hobby longer and longer you study trees in nature and on the internet and you learn you know what a ficus should look like and what a pine should look like uh, or you know what are the characteristics of it and it's important you learn that and you grow and your trees that you make later on in your life are better than your earlier ones, but your earlier ones are your oldest trees. So there's always that contradiction that, you know, if you had that knowledge earlier on, you could have those early trees could be exceptional trees, but it's part of the learning process and everyone goes through that stage. I mean, your first trees structurally may be your worst trees, but they're your oldest trees and maybe the most impressive. Your later trees in life, uh, you know, you don't have as many years to develop them, but you probably get the roots and the structure and everything pretty good. It's They probably will become better trees in the long run. Maybe you won't develop them, but hopefully someone else will. My tree here, I'm not saying it's an exceptional tree, but I'm hoping to develop it into one into the future. I'm trying to get all the characteristics of a large tree in this small size. And that's my goal, and maybe I'll succeed Maybe I won't, you never know. You will hear the term quality bonsai all over the place, but I find no one really explains what a quality bonsai is. So I made a separate video on it of what a quality bonsai is, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. So if you're unsure what a good quality bonsai is, check out that video and I'll explain all the uh, the factors that contribute to making a quality bonsai. It's, it's a fascinating video, I think. I've got my end bench cleared off again. I had to make room. So I've got my Portulacaria Afro Forest over here on this bench. And then over here, I have a bench with my Sarissa. So I've cleared out a lot of trees and you can see it's clear down here below on the floor and over here. So I'm ready for more tropicals to come out. Um, yeah, it's pretty crowded now. I'm keeping my show trees in here. Uh, two reasons. I don't want the birds picking the moss away and wrecking it. Squirrels can dig in here. Or you never know what could happen. So they're safe here in the greenhouse. Plus the moss looks better 
if you keep them in the greenhouse nice and humid in here, uh, the moss will look good for the show. I won't have to you know, worry about it going brown outside or anything or, yeah, or being attacked. So that's the reason all my show trees are still here in the greenhouse. So I've got some room here. I'm bringing more trees out. I'm just bringing my Brazilian rain tree out now. So I have it over here. Uh, here it is over here. And every tree I'm bringing into the greenhouse, I spray it with soap and water. So it's just rinsing off now. So I'll give this a prune up today. It's getting quite long and yeah, a huge canopy. So it needs pruning back and then, you know, allowed to grow again. Uh oh, sounds like a zombie apocalypse again. Here's a look at my Brazilian rain tree on the bench. And you can see, you know, the new shoots are very, very long. So I need to prune it all back, getting taper and movement in my branches. So here I go. When I last repotted my Brazilian rain tree, this was the front of the tree. Since then, I picked a new front, which is more like around here. So that's the view I'll use when I go to prune the tree. I'm going to begin the pruning now. So these new shoots that are very long, I'm going to cut them back to probably two pairs of leaves. So this one I'll cut here and I'll cut halfway between the nodes like that. So always leaving some green growth at the ends of the branches, at least for now. And then after I've done this operation, pruning all the new shoots back, I'll go in and do some branch selection. So here's another new shoot. And again, I'll prune it back to here. Here's another one here. That leads down below. And where's the next set? Uh, got right here so I can prune it off to right here. These Brazilian rain trees will double their size every summer so they're really vigorous growers so they require quite a bit of pruning. If you don't prune them you'll end up with a giant tree. So I had woolly aphids on this tree. I've never had woolly aphids before but this year I seem to get everything. Woolly aphids, scale, aphids, white fly. I don't know if I got mealy bugs, but seems like I got everything. I was just re-watching the trailer for the part two of Dune. I guess it's going to be a three-part movie, three-part series, which is good because I was worried. I thought, how are they gonna fit the whole rest of the book into one more part so I'm glad they're spreading it out into three parts because it would just be cramming way too much into one more movie. All right I think I have most of the new shoots kind of pruned back. I may have missed the odd one but I think I've got most of them done. So let me get it to the front view now. And I'll step back and see what needs a little more harder pruning. Here's a branch here. It divides from one to two and I can shorten it. I've got buds back there so I'll take the tip off here. That gets that branch more compact. Um, this one I have branching here coming off here so I could shorten this one back. I've got like a vertical section of it there sticking up, which I think I want to take the off, so I will. So this whole branch is going to come off. I'll leave a stub. Always safe to leave a stub on these Brazilian rain trees. They like to die back from pruning. So here I have a branch that kind of crosses the design. Um, it's okay to have it fork here, but it's a little long maybe. I'll take it back to here at least for now, maybe even further later. I'm um, looking at this branch, it's way too long and skinny. I can take the end off here, shortening the length of the branch, and then I think I need to shorten this branch even more. I have 
like a dividing here. So I can prune this part of it off so I, I get it coming from one into two then. So this will be my one branch over here and then I need another one over here. So take it off right here and right here. So now that branch is dividing from one to two. Okay. Can I do, do any more reduction? I would like to get this reduced back, but I've got nothing. I'm going into the Hail Mary territory if I do that. So I better not. I'll be patient and wait. There will always be another pruning session. Okay, I think, you know, the tree's looking good. I could, you know, tilt it at the balance it a bit like that. Looks awfully good. Yeah, I think that's certainly got it more compact. Now it's ready to grow and back bud. So once that happens, I can do another pruning on it, reducing it even more. So after seeing those few aphids crawling around on it, I better spray it one more time. I don't want those things spreading in my greenhouse here. So here I go with the soap and water. All right, here I go. And I'll spin it around, getting all the sides of the branches. Okay, that is covered. Um, all these clippings, I will chuck them outside in case they have a few aphids on those. And I'm keeping a few cuttings just to grow as cuttings to give away. All right, I'll rinse the tree off now. It's been sitting for a few minutes. Rinse all the soap off it. Rinse the soap out of the soil here. Good drainage, it's really draining well. That should do it. The benches are filling up fast out here. I'm still worried about my thuges here. I mean, they're not dying, but they're not looking so hot. I hope they make it. I'm watering them really, really carefully, keeping them nice and moist. They're kind of protected here. Out of full sun all day, they get kind of afternoon sun for a few hours, that's it. So these trees are all kind of transitioning to the full sun. Japanese maple will stay kind of protected here for a while anyway. The benches back here are filling up. My buckthorn is looking good there. Filling out nicely. My polyhouse is basically empty. I have nothing on this shelf except for my Pinus artificialis. Nothing on this shelf. There's some used soil there. There's some pots back here and I've got to get to planting that pot. And I just have my sugar maple seedlings here and my pawpaw seeds in here, but nothing else. So I have a lot of room in here if I need to move things from outside in here for a night, if we get frost or anything, I can do that. So the benches are looking very, very green. It's exciting. It's an exciting time when I get all the tropicals out all the trees are outside here together. Yeah. Very nice. Here's my new bench I put in here. It has a few trees on it. Got my solar fan here. There's a switch, I can turn it on here. Yeah, blow some good. Nice and windy, that one. I only turn it off when I'm making a video out here because it's quite noisy. I'll rotate my Brazilian rain tree around so you can see it from all views. So here is the chosen front view. So I'm rotating it around, going to the right view, going to the back view, 
coming around to the left hand side and back to the front. So I'm really pleased. I think this tree is progressing really, really nicely. Today was one of those beautiful days where I just worked away slowly, bringing trees out from the plant room into the greenhouse, spraying them, pruning them, moving trees around, generally just kind of puttering around all day today, and I really, really enjoyed it. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.